Hello, my name is Corey Trott. I'm the director of the Research Integrity and Consultation Program at Virginia Tech. I also serve as the university's research integrity officer. As such, I'm responsible for fostering a culture of ethical research and innovation at Virginia Tech. In support of that goal, I believe it's important to make sure that our friends and neighbors are aware of the systems that are in place to protect their rights and welfare while participating in research. Hi, I'm Carly Emerson, and I'm the director of the Human Research Protections Office at Curling Clinic. My office's role is to ensure that clinical research is conducted in an ethical manner and that researchers follow the rules and regulations, as our goal is to protect those who choose to participate in research. I am very passionate about clinical research, as it is essential for advancing medical knowledge. Both my daughter and I have been participants in research studies. We are here to talk about the safety of clinical research. Throughout history, scientists have been looking for ways to understand, prevent, and treat the diseases that impact our community. While most researchers have good intentions, not all of the research conducted in the past was done ethically, safely, or with consent. For example, there's a story of Henrietta Lacks, a black tobacco farmer born right here in Roanoke, Virginia. She received treatment for cancer in Baltimore and was not well informed by her medical doctor that tissue samples taken during that treatment would be labeled with her name and shared with researchers without her consent or knowledge. It is important to note that it was not standard practice to obtain consent at that time. The researchers who received Ms. Lack's cancer cells discovered that her cells possessed a unique feature that made them ideal for use in research studies. Unknown to Ms. Lax, her cells would go on to be used for research that has improved our understanding and ability to treat disease. Despite Henrietta Lack's important contribution to science, she and her family did not know that her cells were being widely used for research for several decades. The unjust and unethical treatment of Henrietta Lacks and her family highlights the necessity of the informed consent process. While we have discussed what clinical research is in a previous video, it is important to first understand the difference between clinical care, or medical treatment, and clinical research. While there are a lot of similarities, the key difference is that medical treatment is intended to benefit you and help you while using accepted procedures and products, whereas clinical research is intended to study or learn about a medication or a device or a test to potentially help patients in the future. Carly, that's really helpful information, but is it safe to participate in clinical research? That's a great question, Corey. All clinical research has some level of risk and will depend on the type of research being conducted. There are several types of clinical research, including treatment, also known as clinical trials, genetic research, studies to help diagnose diseases, or even compare routine treatments with newer treatments. There is also observational research, where researchers may just follow you through your care and record your data. Corey, since all research has some risk, can you tell us about some of the ways that scientists work to reduce these risks? Well, Carly, most medical research is conducted in the laboratory and often in animals for many years before a new medication, device, diagnostic test, or procedure is studied in humans. In fact, only the most promising new treatments make it to clinical studies. Corey, can you tell us more about how participants are protected once a new treatment makes it to clinical studies? During a research study, physicians and medical staff regularly and carefully monitor each participant to keep them safe. All participants are informed of all known risks before deciding to participate in a research study. So that's how researchers minimize the risk to participants, but who is responsible for regulating the conduct of research? Before research begins, there are many steps that ensure that protections are in place for participants. First, it is important to understand that the federal government regulates medications, medical devices, including those that emit radiation like x-ray machines, and diagnostic tests. The Food and Drug Administration, also known as FDA, is the government entity that protects the rights and safety of participants involved in research of new medical products. It is responsible for reviewing early data and approving if a new medication, device, or procedure can be studied in humans. In addition, all clinical trials must be reviewed by an independent committee known as the Institutional Review Board, or IRB. The IRB is made up of scientific and non-scientific members and must also include representatives from our community. During the review process, the IRB ensures that the proposed research is ethical and that the potential benefits of the trial outweigh the possible risks. The IRB is also responsible for making sure the researchers are following the rules and regulations. Part of those regulations include informing the research participants about the research. Corey, can you tell us more about that process? Sure, Carly. 
The IRB usually requires that researchers inform participants about the potential risks or possible benefits of being involved in clinical research, and that their participation is always voluntary. Before a participant is enrolled in a clinical research study, someone from the research team will review everything that will happen during the study. This is called the informed consent process. The informed consent process often includes a written document known as the research consent form, which describes the potential risks or side effects, potential benefits, and how personal information is protected. This document may require a signature. Throughout the study, the study participants can always ask questions, share their concerns, or change their minds about being in the study. Researchers will also inform participants of any new information learned during the study, including any new or increased risk. Without clinical research studies, medical knowledge cannot be advanced or human health improved. Participation in clinical research studies is important, and understanding the process and protections in place will help you make informed decisions about whether you wish to participate in a research study. We hope that next time that you're approached about participating in a research study or see an advertisement for a research study that may be applicable to you, you are willing to consider participating, since now you know that there are people like us whose jobs are to make clinical research as safe as possible. Thank you for joining us today. For more information about participating in clinical research and iThrive, please visit our website.